Welcome to Football Game Plan's FCS Kickoff presented by the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, and welcome to our 2016 Big Sky Conference preview. So let's get this video kicked off by taking a look at the five burning questions heading into the 2016 Big Sky Conference season. Number one, can these upstarts sustain success? And when I'm talking about upstarts, I'm talking about teams like North Dakota, Portland State, Northern Colorado, and Weber State, all of which had winning records last season after spending a few years near the back end of the Big Sky standings. Sustaining success in football is hard, and in my opinion, it's even harder in the very tough Big Sky. Now, we've seen it last season with Idaho State, who entered 2015, coming off an outstanding 2014 season, only to find themselves back to the bottom of the standings with a 2-9 record. Second, can Montana State succeed without quarterback Dakota Prukop back there in the fold this year? That was a huge blow to the Bobcats offense. Prukop is a difference maker that affects the game on both ends of offense as a passer and also as a running threat. Whomever wins the job, Juco transfer Tyler Brugman or redshirt freshman Ben Folsom and Brady McChesney, they'll have the luxury of having a talented tailback and Chad Newell, an excellent wide receiver and Mitchell Herbert to lean on. But can any of those quarterbacks bring that same it factor that Prukop was able to provide week in, week out. You also look at Portland State dealing with those multiple tragedies in the spring. The Vikings lost two teammates this past spring in offensive lineman Kyle Smith and linebacker A.J. Schlatter. Both were tragic losses which can have an effect on the team looking to build on a tremendous 2015 season. Head coach Bruce Burnham, Barnum, I'm sorry, who was named coach of the year last season, has done a great job so far with the Vikings and will be once again looked upon to get his team mentally, emotionally, and physically ready to play this year. Can Brady Gustafson stay healthy is another question we're looking to answer as we enter the 2016 season. We saw Gustafson's immense potential in last year's opening game upset over North Dakota State, throwing for 434 yards and three touchdowns. But Gustafson only played in seven games last season for the Grizzlies because of an injury. If he's healthy, He'll give the Grizz a shot to win each and every week. At 6'7", 235, Gustafson has a very strong arm and the ability to attack anywhere on the field. Now, with that said, part one for Gustafson is to stay healthy. Part two is to flatline his game. Just like he threw for 434 yards and three touchdowns versus North Dakota State, the following week versus Cal Poly, he tossed three interceptions. If he can stay consistent throughout the season, he'll be a guy to see his draft stock continue to rise come January. And finally, can Southern Utah and Montana withstand those losses on the defensive side of the football? Both the Thunderbirds and the Grizz lost NFL talent on defense, and that was a big part to both squad's success last season. Because of that, you'd expect both teams to take a slight step back this year, but if they can withstand the first quarter of the season as these new units begin to gel, I think you'll see both squads make a serious push or charge up the standings as they get into the thick of conference play. Now here's a look at some of the big games this year on the Big Sky Conference schedule. September 10th seems like showdown Saturday across the Big Sky as there are four huge matchups scheduled that day. There are two games in particular that are primed for an upset as Portland State travels to San Jose State and North Dakota travels to Bowling Green to take on the Falcons. Now these are two games where both Big Sky members actually match up very well versus their FBS counterparts. Also, Montana and Eastern Washington have two big ones in the Missouri Valley Conference as they face Northern Iowa and North Dakota State respectively. These games, even at this juncture in the season, have huge playoff implications. On October 1st, we have a huge conference game between Northern Colorado and Northern Iowa. If the Bears want to stake their claim as a legitimate contender this season within the conference, this is the type of game they'll have to win. New York City is the largest market for broadcast media. 
It's the epicenter for the TV and radio industry. If you ever had a dream of working in the thrilling broadcast world, then make it a reality by going to the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. CSB has helped numerous people get a job with hands-on training and a learn-by-doing mentality. You will learn all of the high-tech equipment in the TV and radio studios. From hosting your own radio show to being a news or sports anchor, operating a camera in the TV studio, or editing audio and video, the choice is yours. Graduates from CSB have gone on to work at some of the major companies in the industry. To get more information, call 1-800-TV-RADIO or check us out at GoCSB.com. Your road to success starts here at the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. Don't forget to check out and grab your copy of our two newly released books, Football, A Love Story, and What Did Football Teach Me? These books feature over 100 stories from current and former coaches, players, executives, and entertainers from across the football landscape describing what got them involved in a game, what they love about it, and what life lessons the game taught them. You can find your copy or order your copy from our website at footballgameplan.com slash books. Well, I think the FCS is really, when you look at it, it's, it's, it's the perfect model for football. Okay, in that as a coach, number one, you deal with Division One. it's great, you deal with a high level of athlete, uh, in our case you deal with a high level of student, it's extremely competitive football, it's a great environment, but it's also doesn't have some of the trappings that the bigger levels have as far as the, the business and the money of things, but you know, it's pure football. And, and as a coach, that's what I like. Is, is you know, it's about the football. And you know, we, we, I think the way we, de we the way we determine our champion is the best is the best playoff system in all of sports. Uh, and I think that you can never argue with who the national championship champion is at the FCS level. And it's uh, it, it's just top to bottom uh, the most competitive bracket of, of playoff playoff sports there is in, in, in any of the sports so you know if, if you like the action I think the, the, the quality of play is extremely high I think the quality of person is extremely high I think there's some great coaches at our level and it's, it's it's attainable to fans too it's not it's also you know you come to an FCS game you have a little bit more of a close experience to the players you know and in our case the, the, the players meet the people in the town it's right there they're not kind of like these pros in waiting you know you can reach out you can touch them you can meet the coaches you can do that stuff it's just enjoyable football at a, at a real high level still. And welcome back to Football Game Plan's FCS kickoff presented by the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, and we're taking a look at the 2016 Big Sky Conference. Now, the Big Sky is widely considered a premier conference in the FCS with a ton of talent from top to bottom. And here's a look at some of that talent as we unveil our 2016 preseason All Big Sky team. Starting with our offensive All Big Sky players, quarterback Case Cookus, as a true freshman, put together a phenomenal first season for the Lumberjacks, and Cookus threw for 3,100 yards, 31 touchdowns to only five interceptions. So, needless to say, that all eyes will be on him and his Lumberjack teammate, wide receiver Emmanuel Butler. And Butler, who hauled in 1,200 of those 3,100 yards and 15 of those 31 touchdown passes from Cookus, is Northern Arizona's big play wideout and one of the finest in the nation. Looking at the rest of the preseason, all conference members on the offense side of the ball, you'll see five football game plan preseason FCS All-Americans. Eastern Washington's Cooper Cup is a highly decorated and accomplished receiver that is on track to break virtually every FCS receiving record. Cup has amassed over 4,700 yards receiving and 56 touchdowns in his Eagles career. Montana State's J.P. Flynn is not only one of the top offensive linemen in the big sky, but in the country. And Flynn was outstanding last year for the Bobcats and, having, and after having all-season surgery, he's ready to go out with a bang as a senior. Moving over to the defensive side of football, the Fighting Hawks of North Dakota are well represented at each and every level. Defensive lineman Brandon Dranka, linebacker Brian Labatt, and defensive back Cole Reyes are why many are expecting big things out of Grand Forks this season. 
Linebacker Mac Bignell was a football game plan All-American, preseason All-American, and is one of the few bright spots defensively from last year's subpar Montana State Bobcat season. Southern Utah suffered a ton of losses defensively, but they do have a returning stud in linebacker Michael Needham. Needham has been stellar since his freshman season for the Thunderbirds, and at 6'4", 210, he is particularly disruptive in the passing game, finishing with three interceptions, bringing one back for a touchdown. As the junior backer continues to fill out his frame and grow his game, he'll be yet another Thunderbird player that'll be heading to the NFL. Now, defensive back Xavier Coleman out of Portland State is a three-year starter and two-time All-Big Sky Conference performer. Coleman picked all five passes last year and had 18 pass breakups. His ability to lock down one side of the field makes playing defense a heck of a lot easier for the rest of the Vikings. Looking at the specialist, two football game plan preseason All-Americans grace the list. Punt returner Ellis Onik II out of Northern Colorado and punter Mitch Mendel out of North Dakota are arguably some of the best at their position in the nation. Onik averaged an eye-popping 24 yards per punt return, bringing two back for touchdowns. That type of impact is why the Bears have had their best season since moving up to Division I football. Kickoff returner Hakeem Deggs did his damage as well as a kickoff returner with two kickoff returns for touchdowns, averaging 35 yards per return. So needless to say, the special teams unit is a big time strength for Northern Colorado. Punter Mitch Mendel averaged 44 and a half yards a punt last year, downing 22 inside the 20 yard line and also forcing 14 fair catches. When your punter is able to affect the game like that, he's a legit threat. We'll take a short break and return with a look at some more of the Big Sky's best. Um, it's different, you know, it's, uh, I think it's a little bit smaller obviously than the FBS. I mean you're going to get um, more attention to detail. I mean you could go to a bigger school, you know, Ohio State, Florida State, USC, um, and you could be one of those, you know, 90 players that they have on scholarship, but you know, how much are you going to play, you know, how much attention to detail, you know, um, are you going to be able to graduate in four years, those are things obviously I didn't work at one of those schools, but those are some of the questions you got to ask uh, yourself before you step foot on a campus or make decisions. You come to the FB or the FCS and I think number one, if you're that good, you're going to play and they're going to find kids. I mean, you look at the second pick in the NFL draft this year, mm -hmm. uh, the quarterback from North Dakota State. Um, and you go look at any one of those kids, I think any one of those kids could play at an, an FBS school. And they just happen to be in an FCS school who is getting looked at. They just won another national title. Um, you do, you, it is great football at this level. Um, maybe not as good as you know the Pac-10 or the Big 12 or you know the Big 10, one of those type of schools, but it is still outstanding college football where kids are getting recognized. They're still getting drafted in the NFL. They're going to graduate probably in four years. Uh, maybe not at a big, huge institution. Um, and the, the biggest thing is, I think that you'll get a chance to ex for some more exposure being on the field and playing. Um, you know, the bigger schools, you got to look at, you know, are you going to play and how soon? Or do you go to an FCS school and maybe you start for four years, um, you become an All-American and you get your chance other than uh, maybe playing one or two years at, a, at an F, you know, BS school. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the FCS has done a great job promoting its football the last three years. Uh, nowadays with the social media and everything that goes on, it's taken off. And again, I, there's a lot of schools in, in you know, our level right now, um, like North Dakota State, I bet you any one of those kids would be playing at a, a bigger school if they wanted to be, but they chose North Dakota State for a reason and it was the right fit and they got exposure and they just won how many national championships and the quarterback was the second pick in the NFL draft this year. So there is a chance, I don't think uh, you have to go to a, a Division 1A school or an FCS school just make it to the NFL. The FCS has a lot of great teams and a lot of great players, and those kids do get looked at. And maybe they play, uh, like we said, instead of one year or two years at the FCS level, they're starting for all four years at the FBS level. Um, you look at some of the schools in the Northeast uh, this year, Harvard, uh, Dartmouth, mm -hmm. um, Villanova, New Hampshire. I mean, all those schools have been in, in Fordham. I mean, they've all been to the playoffs and they've all had kids that got drafted or have played. Um, they've had a successful, what, New Hampshire's been in the playoffs, I think 11 years in a row or 12 years in a row in Villanova. Same thing, I mean, those are 
Those are great schools academically. Uh, those kids graduate in four years and they played for four years and made a name for themselves and got themselves in position. So I think uh, the FCS is doing a great job with what they're doing in terms of promoting our level of football. And uh, I just hope it continues that way. And I think when kids step on some of those campuses and see what's in front of them, uh, that they, you know, they're a little shocked and they can be very happy at a school like that as well. Broadcasting can help you reach the next level in the amazing world of broadcast and entertainment media. I've mentored several interns here at the Covino and Rich Show at Sirius XM, and the ones from CSB always stand out to me. They have a knowledge of the equipment, uh, knowledge of editing, what it's like to be in a studio, and that always eliminates a huge learning curve. Their professional studios give students a hands-on, learn-by-doing approach using equipment used in actual radio stations and TV studios. Visit our website at gocsb.com or call 1-800-TV-RADIO. Connecticut School of Broadcasting. Start today. Although Northern Arizona has the first team all-conference player in quarterback Case Cookus, in my opinion, the best group of quarterbacks collectively are in Cheney, Washington. Eastern Washington with starting quarterback Jordan West and backups Riley Hennessy, Eric Barrier, and Gage Gubbert are a talented quartet. West had an excellent season last year, throwing 30 touchdowns to only eight INTs. Even with that success, he still had to fight off strong competition from the others this spring in order to regain that spot, which in a sense just further strengthens the depth at the quarterback position. With the way they run the football, I would be hard pressed to rank any other crop of running backs over the group at Cal Poly. Football game plan All-American Joe Prothero, Corey Garcia, Kyle Lewis, DJ Peluso, and Jared Muhammad spearhead the Mustangs option attack and combined for over 2,500 yards on the ground. They'll be breaking in a new quarterback, but with that five-headed monster in the backfield, that transition will be made much easier for whomever takes over the reins under center. Cooper Cup alone can make this the top receiving core in the conference, but he has had an outstanding co-pilot in Kendrick Bourne, who nearly topped the thousand yards and scored eight touchdowns himself. Both guys are able to play inside or out and have the ability to take a short pass a long way. Northern Arizona has the best offensive line in the conference. The Lumberjacks have Leroy Gunther and Eric Rodriguez to go along with Jacob Julian, who also made our preseason all-conference list. Look for the Lumberjacks offense to once again put up impressive numbers this season. We have a tie for the best defensive line in the conference between North Dakota and Eastern Washington. The Fighting Hawks were very strong against the run last year, and it's because of the play of their defensive line led by Brandon Dranka that allowed their linebackers free reign to the football. Now, Eastern Washington has two guys in Samson Ebucom and Matthew Sommer that do an excellent job of maintaining and in some cases resetting and playing on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. I'm a big fan of Weaver State's linebacking core. The trio of Trayvon Johnson, Emmett Tella, and Carson Liljenquist combined for 24 and a half TFLs, and Johnson led the group and the defense in total with nine and a half sacks. There's a lot of speed and athleticism coming from that second level of the Wildcats defense. North Dakota gets denied for the best secondary in the conference. The Fighting Hawks boast two excellent defensive backs in Deion Harris and Cole Reyes. Both are 6'2 and are able to match up anywhere on the field. Northern Colorado gets the nod for the best special teams in the conference. The Bears have two of the conference's best returners in Ellis Onyx II and Hakeem Deggs. Both guys help give the Bears offense a short field to operate with and helps Northern Colorado excel in all three facets of the game. 2016 should be a good year for draft prospects in the Big Sky Conference as there's quality senior talent available. So let's take a look at some of the guys you want to keep an eye on this upcoming season. Two quarterbacks headline the list as Brady Gustafson out of Montana and Jordan West out of Eastern Washington will definitely draw the attention of NFL scouts. Now Gustafson has the physical traits that scouts want to see and he checks off all those boxes, but you want to see him become much more consistent down to down and game to game. West put up impressive numbers last season and 
And if he is able to duplicate his 2015 campaign at 64220, you'll start to see his stock rise as well. Staying in Cheney on the defensive side of football, both defensive linemen Matthew Sommer and Samson Ebukam are very good pro prospects. Sommer is a one gap penetrator inside, while Ebukam is able to bring that heat off the edge. The Montana Grizzlies have another excellent defensive end prospect in Caleb Killer. The 6'5", 275 pound product racked up 82 tackles last year, which is unheard of for a defensive tackle and has shown the ability to pressure the quarterback. This season, Kidder moves down to defensive end, and with that ability to play the run as well as the pass, NFL teams will definitely covet not only his ability, but his versatility as well. And finally, cornerback Xavier Coleman out of Portland State has tremendous ball skills that has led him to become a four-year starter in the secondary. His ability to play man and zone coverage, along with being able to take the ball away, he had five interceptions last season, makes his skill set attractive to the next level. In this conference, he'll definitely get ample opportunity each and every Saturday to showcase those skills. We'll be back after this commercial break. The unique thing about the FCS is if uh, it puts you in a position where if you win, you can keep playing. That uh, it's competitive. Um, it is Division One football, and it's also uh, been able to cross conferences. I think uh, within our league, we play uh, alongside the Ivy League, alongside the CAA alongside the NEC and uh, it really gives you an opportunity each and every Saturday to prove yourself. The other thing is that uh, these schools within this league are putting people out that are student athletes, that they'll achieve one of the better educations in the country, uh, biased here at Bucknell. But we're also in a position where we can participate and play against some of the FBS schools. Last year we played against Army and a couple years we played against Temple. Uh, to, to be able to judge yourself in terms of what you've done with your program, what you've done with your team against those teams that are you know, the, the more preeminent teams in the, in the country. And that I think we, have, we all have to realize that the football field, when it comes down to it, it's 53.3 yards wide and 120 yards long. Regardless of where you're playing, that's the field. And uh, that's what's exciting about college football, that you, uh, when, you, when you get out there on a Saturday, um, and I keep telling my, my, my team, and I've always said this to my teams, they might be yelling, all right? Regardless of who they're yelling for, make sure that you know they're yelling for you. New York City, the media capital of the world. But in America, there is a world of media at our fingertips from coast to coast. The broadcast media industry connects us in so many ways and remains on the cutting edge of providing us news and entertainment. Have you ever pictured yourself working in the media? Did you ever dream of working in TV or on the radio? Make your dreams come true today. Connecticut School of Broadcasting is the oldest and largest group of communication schools in the country. At Connecticut School of Broadcasting, you'll learn by doing with hands-on training straight from professional broadcasters. There is job placement assistance for graduates, day and evening courses available. Graduate and get into the job market in only 8 or 16 weeks. Don't waste another second daydreaming about what you want to do with your life. Call 1-800-TV-RADIO and start living your dream today. Well, for me, I, I think, A, it, it kind of keeps the big picture in context. So if, you, if you're looking, especially in our league, where you're looking at student athletes being reflective of the student body and the mission of the institution, I think our league does that great. And just as importantly, there's some premier players, premier programs. It's an exciting level. It's 
traditionally very wide open, unpredictable. Mm -hmm. It's certainly not stale. It's on the cutting edge of an awful lot of things. And I just think it's a very entertaining level of football that is played by some very, very talented student athletes that have just kind of chosen a little bit different path as they try to balance their professional career in addition to their football future. And you know, I can't speak for everybody, but an awful lot of our players have aspirations of playing on Sunday, but want a really good backup plan in case that doesn't work in the workforce. And so it's, it's really kind of it's reflective of everything that you want of really good football, cutting edge, offense and defense, unpredictability, people that are reflective of student bodies, and I, I think it's, it's probably at its zenith of popularity and talent. And welcome back to our Big Sky Conference preview as it's now time to give our predictions for the upcoming season. The Idaho State Bengals, in my opinion, won't finish 2-9 again this year. They'll be better. Offensively, look for new offensive coordinator Max Troxel to add some new wrinkles and boost creativity on that side of the football, which will help them be able to sustain drives and help out their defense. Any improvement on offense can help get them back on the same course we saw them back in 2014. Health is the biggest key for UC Davis as they were just decimated by injuries last year. The good part is that it forced them to play a lot of youth and as a result, they've developed a ton of depth. Now the Aggies have 17 returning starters along with a stronger two deep. Where you still have questions is along the defensive line. The Aggies gave up six yards of carry to opposing offenses last year. That obviously can't happen again and I don't think it will, but I still have to take the wait and see approach with the squad. Sacramento State comes into this year with questions at quarterback, not due to talent, but more so on how will the shakeup in the offensive coaching staff mesh with quarterback Nate Ketteringham, who looks like the incumbent starter this season. Once they get on the same page, the next question will go towards the offensive line. I think the Hornets are one of those teams that no one wants to face because of how they attack you on both sides. Defensively, pass defense will be the concern entering the year. If they can't get significantly better in that area, it'll be the cause for them not finishing with the winning record in 2016. It's tough to have a team that had the success Southern Utah had last year fall this far in the standings, but when you lose three pro players on defense, your starting quarterback and your head coach, you can understand why there's cause for pause for the Thunderbirds. However, they elevated assistant coach Demario Warren to head coach, which helps keep continuity with the players, and they are still a talented football team. Let's not forget that. How talented and how quickly they can gel, also how quickly can they stabilize the quarterback position, could ultimately determine whether or not they are able to have a winning season. Montana State may be a surprise to some at this spot considering the losses, but I think the Bobcats could be one of those fly in the ointment type teams this year in the Big Sky. Despite losing Prukop to transferring to Oregon, the offense, in my opinion, still has a really good option to lean on in running back Chad Newell. And I think defensively, 2015 was an aberration. Let's toss that out the window. And with linebacker Mac McNeil, along with seven other starters back, I think their pride will kick in and allow the Bobcats to finish much better than what we saw last season. No one wants to face a triple option, and I'm only half joking here, but because of that, you have to slide Cal Poly into the eighth spot just off the strength of their option attack. The Mustangs do an excellent job of neutralizing the opponent's athleticism with their offensive attack, and how well can quarterback Khalil Jenkins get acclimated with the timing and efficiency that we saw Chris Brown operate with his entire career is going to be the question. Defensively, the Mustangs have to do a better job in getting off the field. The improvement has to come from the second and third levels if they want to continue to climb the conference rankings and push for a playoff berth. Keep an eye on Weber State as they check in at number seven. The Wildcats have a veteran team returning and are brimming with confidence after posting a winning season last year. I think we'll see an even better defense from the Wildcats in 2016. The biggest question and concern is at the quarterback position. Jadrian Clark has to protect the football a lot better. The turnovers killed them last season and they put their defense in bad spots. 
I think Clark's game will positively flatline and the Wildcats can definitely post back-to-back -back winning seasons. The old football saying goes, you need to win two out of the three facets of a game in order to come away victorious. And I think when you look at Northern Colorado, those two facets will be their offense and their special teams. The Bears obviously need to get better defensively. They gave up nearly 440 yards per game and 34 points a game back in 2015. Why I have them finishing six is due to the fact that their offense got better every week, which leads to sustaining drives a little bit more, giving your defense more time on the sideline to get coached up. And the special teams dynamic, you also have to factor that in when you're looking at Northern Colorado. They have the ability to flip the field position each and every time you kick to these guys. And if the defense can just be average, which I think they will be, then the Bears will be able to duplicate the success of 2015. Now we're getting into the playoff territory with the Montana Grizzlies coming in at number five, and we know the Grizz offensive success is tied to quarterback Brady Gustafson. I think offensively they'll be just fine despite the slight question marks up front. Now defensively the Grizz may not be as strong as we're used to seeing them be, so expect a lot of high scoring games within this conference. If their defense can't surprise, especially in the secondary, the Grizz will definitely finish much higher by season's end. Eastern Washington has to replace their entire offensive line this season, and that's always a big question mark when you analyze teams. Not because the Eagles don't have the talent, but because it's obvious that they do. But for an offensive line, it's more about gelling. How quickly can this group of talented individuals form a talented unit is the key. Defensively, 10 starters return, and that continuity will make them much better. With the way they own the line of scrimmage, we may see the Eagles' defense help out their offense early on this year by winning a game or two themselves. Now, this is still a dangerous football team, one that'll be more than likely in the FCS playoffs this season. What can Case Cookus in Northern Arizona do for an encore this year? Well, I think they'll be in the mix for the Big Sky title. For a young team to have the success they did last year only bodes well for them this upcoming season. The Lumberjacks defense received a boost with the return of Supelli, Anau, and Lorenzo Melvin along the defensive line. This is a well-balanced team that has to avoid resting on their laurels of 2015. Portland State checks in at number two as the Vikings offense will once again put up a lot of points. Quarterback Adam Caressa's dual threat ability gives defenses fits week in, week out. Now defensively, they're solid on the perimeter. That's your corners, your outside linebackers, your alley defenders. It's the battery that you're worried about. Their interior defensive line, the Mike backer position, and free safety. However, I think the depth is there for them to not miss a beat. Circle September the 10th. That matchup versus San Jose State, as it may be the first FCS over FBS upset of the year. Portland State, in my opinion, looks very strong this season. And finally, at number one are the North Dakota Fighting Hawks, and I'm a big fan of their defense. They were the best in the conference last year, and they returned nine starters on that side of the ball. Offensively, there isn't enough words to describe how excellent John Santiago was for them last season as a freshman, both as a runner and also as a returner. The offensive line could be a question as only one starter returns, but all in all, this is a solid team. And to be honest, they're pretty ticked off that they missed out on an at-large bid last year and are chomping at the bit to kick the door down completely this season. Also, look for quarterback Keaton Studsworth to improve and balance out the offense. The FCS, in my mind, is, is, is the greatest level of football in the country. It, 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 it doesn't necessarily always have the resources, the, the, the glitz, the glamour of the FBS level, but the FCS is a level that I think plays outstanding football. It's extremely competitive. It, it, it plays to a national champion at the end in a tournament format. And I think the experience of, 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 a, of aiming for that, that championship is something that you can't get on any other level. So that's it for our Big Sky Conference season preview. Be sure to check out our other FCS Conference previews on the website, footballgameplan.com slash FCS kickoff. Be sure to check out all of our social media accounts on our website at footballgameplan.com slash FCS kickoff. And be sure to follow us on all of our social media accounts. Also check out the website at footballgameplan.com slash FCS kickoff.
Make sure to check out the FCS Opening Drive radio show every Friday, 10 a.m. Eastern Time with host Luke Diamond and myself. You can download the app for free on Google Play and also on iTunes. The call-in number is located on the screen right now and also where you can listen online.